I've done a couple of videos over the past couple of months on the subject of giving railway lines in London names, the lines of the Overground and the Docklands Light Railway to be specific. And a question that has come up a lot is, why not just give all the TFL lines a letter or number, as other metro systems do? Actually, some people appeared really quite angry about this point, and I'm not sure why. So why does the Underground use an apparently archaic system of giving lines names instead of a consistent code, so to speak? The reason things are different on the Underground, and this is the case for just about every question regarding oddities of the Tube, is that the Underground is not like other metro systems. It was the first, and it was built by individual companies over several decades, rather than being planned as a civic project purely for the benefit of the city as a whole. Let's do another of those dives into history that I like to do. As I say, the Underground was the first such system in the world, and when its first lines were dug, they were considered to be the same as a conventional railway. With a conventional railway, the names they were given typically served three purposes. One, to provide a simple summary of the railway to Parliament, who sometimes need things spelling out. Two, to attract investment. Three, to attract passengers and companies with goods to transport. The most basic form was to just say where the railway went. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway practically sells itself as a name. It serves the major manufacturing centre of Manchester and the busy port of Liverpool. Oh, I'm sorry, my wallet just flew out of my pocket for some reason. Some companies chose names that made the line sound grander than it was. The Great Western Railway was hardly the only company in the west of Britain. The Great Northern Railway didn't even get as far north as York, but the name advertised the fact that it was the most direct route along the east coast from London to the north. Sometimes the names of railways changed. There was a company called the East and West India Docks and Birmingham Junction Railway, so-called because it provided a link between London's docks and the London and Birmingham Railway. But the railway became better known as a commuter route through North London, so it was renamed to the far simpler North London Railway. The first underground line was the Metropolitan Railway. It was a railway running in the metropolis, which was a major selling point. There were restrictions on building railways in central London for complicated legal reasons, so an indisputably metropolitan railway was a novelty. This was followed by the Hammersmith and City Railway, the Metropolitan District Railway, the City and South London Railway, and so forth. These were all rather cumbersome titles. It was really the coming of an organisation called Underground Electric Railways of London that simplified things. They bought out the Metropolitan District Railway, the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, and the Baker Street and Waterloo Railway, and merged other proposed lines to create the Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway. These long titles were shortened to the District Railway, the Hampstead Railway, the Bakerloo Railway and the Piccadilly Railway. Bakerloo was actually a press invention, but UERL were happy to take it. So people just got into the habit of calling lines by simple names. UERL and most of the other underground lines got taken over by London Transport in 1933, and London Transport continued the trend, extending the concept by renaming existing lines usually to something similar to what they were already called, and by giving names to new lines as they were built. Since 1933 there have been two completely new lines, the Victoria and the Jubilee. There has also been the acquisition of one further line, the Waterloo and City, and the creation of a new line from an existing route, the Circle Line. Of course we do use numbers for bus routes, and the trams used to use route numbers, although now they just seem to use destinations. Personally, I don't really see the point in renaming the existing underground lines, and I think it would cause more confusion than it would resolve. We're just used to the names, for all their flaws. There's nothing inherently less confusing about lines A, B, C, D, etc. than there is about the District Circle Northern, etc. Speaking personally, I get along better with names than letters, and I'm virtually innumerate, so I'd just end up in Penge or somewhere. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this unlettered tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I was going to go into more detail on where the individual lines' names came from, but it quickly became clear that this would become a very long and even more rambling video if I did. But I might make a separate video, or possibly more than one, on that subject if it would be of interest. Let me know in the comments section. Anyway, I would like as always to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, as well as here on YouTube, for your generous support. You are the abbreviation to my company name. And I will see you all again very soon for another Tale from the Tube.